sent to stand for Jesus. He took a stand for me. He purchased my salvation on the cross of Calvary. I'll have to praise Him ever for the wondrous love He showed. Oh, praise His lovely name. Oh, praise His lovely name. Oh, praise His lovely name. I'm not ashamed. Table and 
a place to lay down just look around at all of your blessings brother that's God oh that's God he's walking through my darkest night his spirit is descending with power and might and his love it surrounds me and wraps my soul safe and tied oh that's God he made a way for eternal life sent his son to die what a great sacrifice who nailed all my sin to a cross brother that's God when your body came out of that sickness oh that was God and when you had no money but someone provided that was God when you were hungry and tired and no rest could be found now there's food on your table and a place to lay down just look around at all of your blessings brother that's God oh that's God he's walking through my darkest night his spirit is descending with power and might and his love it surrounds me and wraps my soul safe and tight oh that's God he made a way for eternal lives in his son to die what a great sacrifice who nailed all my sin to a cross brother that's God oh that's God he's walking through my darkest night his spirit is descending with power and might and his love it surrounds me and wraps my soul safe and tight oh son to die what a great sacrifice who nailed all my sin to a cross brother that's God oh who nailed all my sins to a cross brother that's God Amen To him there's nothing to it I know he'll see me through His sweet victory Well even when storms are raging He is the rock of ages I know that God is able Mighty is he Oh yes I know my God can do it To him there's nothing to it I know he'll see me through His sweet victory Well even Storms are raging, he is the rock of ages. I know that God is able, mighty is he. Three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire because before the king they would not bow, but they said, Listen, king, let it be known. We serve the living God and we're not. can do it to him there's nothing to it I know he'll see me through in sweet victory well even when storms are raging he is the rock of ages I know that God is able mighty is he now they marched around those walls of Jericho they knew the walls would fall cause God told them so just like God Work for them, he's still working now. Our God will never change, he has great power. Well, I, I know my God can do it to him. There's nothing to it, I know. I know he'll see me through his sweet victory. Well, even when storms are raging, he is the rock of ages. I know, I know that God is able, mighty is he. Before the 
king they would not bow but they said listen king just let it be yeah. done we serve the living god and we're not alone well i know all my god can do it i know he'll see me through his sweet victory well even when storms are Can do to him, to him there's nothing to him. I know, I know he'll, he'll see me through his sweet victory. Well, even when storms are raging, he is the rock of ages. I know that God is able, mighty is he. Now three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire because before the king they would not bow. But they said, listen here, king, let it be known We serve the living God, we're not alone Sing it! Well, I, I know that God can do it To him and there's nothing to it I know he'll see me through its sweet victory Well, even when storms are raging He is the rock of I know that God is able, mighty To it. I know he'll see me through it, sweet victory. Well, even when storms are raging, he is the rock of ages. I know, I know, and God is able, mighty is he. The Father has a plan, though it's hard to see. But he is there, no doubt, when the storm around you rages and you're tossed to and fro, when you're faced with life's decisions, not sure which way to go, stand still, let go.
He'll do it again Just take a look At where you are now And where you've been Has a the same now as then you may not know how you may not know when but he'll do it again tonight so just take a look at where you are now and where you've been hasn't he always come through the things that you're going through and he knows how you're hurting you see he knows your heart and he knows how it's been broken in two But he's the God of the sun, the stars, and the seas, and he is your father. If he can calm the storm, then he knows the way to fix this fall. the same now as then You may not know how and you may not know when but he'll do it again You may
have your Bibles, stand, turn over to 2 Kings 22, 1 and 2. And if you're able to stand, please stand. If you can't, we understand. We're not trying to do a repeat of yesterday or any other time. This is a new day, a new night, a new service, new faces. But we want to be obedient to the Holy Ghost. Second Kings 22, 1 and 2, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidiah, the daughter of Adidiah of Boscoth. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of David his father and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. Fathers, we come before you in the name of the Son, Jesus. We pray, Lord, for a few moments of time, not a word too much or a word too less, but that's in due season. We pray, Lord, that you anoint the ears of the hearer Lord, and you anoint the hearts that they receive. And on our mouth, Lord, to speak your words, the words of life. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Turn around and tell your neighbor the pastor still loves you. Tell your other neighbor the evangelist loves you. Tell somebody that Jesus loves you more. Tell somebody the message tonight is. The continuation of last night preparing for revival. I started out trying to lay a little groundwork of understanding about myself personally, and I never left that, never got away from that. Uh, and uh, telling you that, that the Lord it gave me a mandate uh, about 10 years ago uh, to share with America uh, 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 the things that I saw in the third world countries and I have saw uh, not near as what many others have saw and that it was coming to the United States. And one of the things he pointed out to me, he said, this is not the seven years of tribulation period. He pointed out strongly, he said, this is before the seven year tribulation period. And, uh, uh, and, and a lot of the things I saw was... Uh, 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 the poverty, uh, uh, and I saw economically uh, poverty. I saw physically poverty. Uh, I, I mean, just all on every side, and 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 I saw spiritual decay. I, uh, uh, in in Jamaica, I, I was in churches, and I had a guy to approach me, and 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 he began to. T uh, he said, "Do you know who this is?" And and I said, "No." I said, "This is a good witch, and this is a bad witch," and they have this in their uh, they had a picture portraying it in their sanctuary and uh, 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 the good witch and the bad witch, and they was honoring what they called the good witch. And I said uh, unto them, I said, listen, I said, there's no such thing as a good witch or a bad witch. A witch is a witch, and the Bible said, suffer not a witch to live. Amen. He got angry with me. Jamaicans have one of the highest or have the highest uh, uh, anger rate. Uh, uh, they, they can be set off faster than any person in the world as far as their uh, anger. Uh, I mean, uh, they'll be smiling and loving on you and then just uh, quicker than a snap of your finger. Uh, I mean, uh, be so mad at you. And uh, 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 But anyway, uh, 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 what I'm saying, the mixture of the other religions of the world and bringing it in, trying to bring it into Christianity. We shake our heads tonight and we say, man, oh man, well, that's just, you know, because of saying it. But we're doing the same thing in America. We are. We're doing the same thing in America, bringing in other religions and uh, into our lives and worshiping and allowing those things there. We're not going to get go to there tonight, but uh, just showing you and trying to tell you uh, that there are things that has taken place and that the time is now for revival in the America and the time is now for revival in the world. The time is now for revival in ourselves personally as individuals and revival does not take place corporately the revival does not take place nationally the revival does not take place until it takes place individually 
If we don't have an individual revival, we'll not have a church revival. We'll not have a community revival. We'll not have a county revival. We'll not have a national revival nor a world revival if we don't get a revival individually. And I pointed out last night uh, the uh, 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 five names here and what they have meant and, 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 and going on there. And, and uh, talking about Josiah, that David, uh, he walked in all the way of David, his father. Uh, uh, he walked uh, and what he'd done was right in the side of the Lord. He didn't turn to the right hand or to the left, but he walked a straight and narrow path. And when he said, uh, uh, called David his father, he was referring to being of the lineage of David, not a direct son but on down the line uh, history uh, believes that uh, Josiah was the 16th uh, uh, king uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of Judea uh, uh, and so David being the second king of Judea you can see how far down uh, uh, in the lineage that it goes but him being an offspring and the lineage of David so uh, there is a great need to prepare for revival revival comes when people recommit their hearts and lives to God. This is what is needed today. Josiah was raised in an ungodly home. Are we not living in ungodly homes and ungodly communities and having ungodly families? Uh, many of us may say, well, not my home, but yeah, on my left side or right side or whatever. But let me tell you, uh, uh, several years ago, I believe it was about 2013, uh, statistics was taken uh, and the uh, state of uh, uh, Tennessee uh, of how many people attended church. Uh, and I know I'm in Ray County, but let me just say this. You border Ray County or Bledsoe County, and statistics said that Bledsoe County had the least church attendance than any county in the state. The least out of 95 counties, Bledsoe County had the least church attendance than any in the state. Brother Donnie Minnie got mad at me when I made this statement, and I'm going to make it again tonight. As a pastor, you know what that tells me? That tells me that Bledsoe County is the most ungodliest county in the state of Tennessee. You say, what? You shouldn't say that. Well, uh, the Bible tells us plainly, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is. Now, now I know there's a statement that the birds of feather flock together. Amen? And fellowship is taught throughout the Word of God continuously. When we lose fellowship with the Lord, we're going to lose the Spirit for revival. When we lose fellowship one with another, amen, we don't, we don't have no problem socializing at the Walmart. We don't have no problem socializing at the restaurant. We don't have no problem socializing on the ball field. Why can't we come together and socialize with the Holy Ghost in the presence of an almighty God giving Him praise and glory? We have a need of revival today. Josiah was raised in an ungodly home. His evil, idolatrous father, King Amnon, was assassinated when Josiah was eight years old. So he inherited the throne and became the king. He was raised by Hilkiah, the high priest. Uh, he was ready to be king. The spiritual and moral conditions of Judah continued to decline. How many knows what the name Judah means? Praise. Amen. And so when when the uh, uh, when they went when Israel went to war out of all the tribes you know who marched first Judah Judah went out and marched first. Why? To bring praise. But before they even went out of the camp, there was prayer being made. When they was walking in relationship with the Lord, their God. There was prayer being made. David would not go fight a battle until he inquired of the Lord. And he would say, should I go or should I stay? Should I fight or should I not? And when the Lord would say go, then after prayer, he would release the tribe of Judah to march first because Judah was praised and they'd go out giving God praise. 
Oh, you that are fighting battles tonight, if you'll learn to start uh, 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 start praying uh, uh, before you move and make any decisions and do any, take any actions, uh, uh, start your praying. Uh, and then when you do take that first step, take that first step uh, in praise unto the Lord your God. Uh, and let praise go in front of you uh, as you take the weapons uh, that are not carnal but mighty through God uh, uh, to the point pulling down of your stronghold uh, for the enemy that is set before you. Judah would go out, but they became a moral decline in Judah. When there's a moral decline in Judah, praise begins to cease. Churches become silent when there's a, a moral decline in the praise department. We may have a lot of actions, we may be, as Paul said, sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. We may have a lot of emotions, but I want to tell you there's something more uh, to a relationship with God than being uh, just, a, and I'm just as emotional as anybody, bro, Donnie. There was a time, and I, I'm about to get back there. Fat boy used to be able to run and run well. And I'm just about back there. Uh, you, you couldn't stay up with me when the Holy Ghost got in my feet. Amen. Amen. So speaking of emotion, I'm probably as emotional as anybody you'll ever meet. I cry. I shout. I clap. I raise my hands. I even do a little dance once in a while and I don't even know how to dance. I'd even run. There's times that I'd hit the door and, and people think I, was, I thought I was knocking the door, plumb off the hinges, and, and I'd take me a lap down through the parking lot or around the building or whatever. But let me tell you, it is emotion is great. And it's okay when you're being uh, uh, activated through the presence of God. But on that note, let me say, you do not have to have an urge from the Spirit of God to lift your hands up to glorify God. You do not have to have an urge or a push through the Spirit of God to give a hand clap of praise unto God. I have one pastor who would say it like this, and I really don't like the terminology, but there's a lot of truth to it. He'd say, sometimes we need to just give God some praise on the credit. What he was saying is that sometimes, no matter how bad we feel, no matter how bad our circumstance looks, uh, no matter how uh, uh, heated the battle is around us, uh, sometimes we need to step out uh, and call that that's not as though it were uh, and give God some praise uh, for the victory uh, that is coming before you. And don't put it in the terminology, I'm giving God praise for the victory I'm about to receive. Just go ahead and step out by faith. You was teaching faith. Go ahead and step out by faith and say, I'm giving God for the victory that I've gotten over this matter. It may not look like it now. It may not sound like it now. I may not feel like it now. But I'm giving Him praise. Stop trying to activate and act on faith as uh, in the fact mode and, and walk in it in the, uh, uh, my friend, as it really is uh, uh, what faith is. Uh, uh, faith is that God will. Uh, if He said it, uh, take Him at His word uh, and believe it. What was your message yesterday morning? Just believe in God? Amen. Oh, that sounds so simple, don't it? Sounds very, very easy. But I want to tell you, it can be extremely hard. Amen? Mm. We make it hard. Amen? You want to come help me preach? Come on. Guys, if y'all want to grab a mic and get up here, you just come on. Amen? Uh, and, you do, uh, and I like it when the audience get involved in, when I'm preaching. Amen? I do. I like it when you get involved. And, and we do. We make it so hard many times in trying to walk by faith and live by faith. And so if we're going to live by faith, let's live by faith. 
But we find that Judah was declining in its morality. America, mm, the greatest nation on earth, has declined to such a low degree in morality that it's pathetic. Amen? When we're trying to say that it's okay to have uh, uh, the same gender uh, together in a marriage, uh, uh, my friend, it's contrary to the Word of God. Uh, and America is living a double standard uh, uh, whenever 9-11 happened uh, and the Twin Towers fell. Uh, uh, what did all of our representatives uh, and our politicians uh, and the government say? Uh, and they put it on their buildings and their signs. Uh, pray, pray, pray. Uh, but then they turn around and they want to say it's okay for the same gender to live together in the same house and call it all right and righteous before God. It's immoral. It's sin. God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. I may get thrown off, but that's all right. I may get thrown off of social media, but it's all right. Let me tell you, social media personnel, you throw off the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you'll stand in judgment before a living God for your actions, just like any pastor, any preacher, or any president, or any senator. My friend, you will give an account for your decision Try to hide the truth and try to destroy the morality of people and promote immorality. Let me tell you, Judah was declining. We wonder why America's getting in the condition she's in. And she's been declining because she's deviated from the truth. Why is America deviating from the truth? Churches across our land have begun deviating from the truth. They've been declining morally. I don't know if any of you guys out there that's got the big platforms I ever see anything like this or not but let me tell you when you go around and you take polls uh, wanting to find out what people want to hear and you adhere to their sin uh, and stay away from it uh, you're going to stand before a living God uh, on judgment day uh, and he's going to tell you depart uh, for you mm. Anybody go around and say, what you like to do? And they say, well, I like to drink, or I'd like to uh, commit adultery. I'd like to do this, or I'd like to do that. And that preacher stays away from it just because. I want to tell you, that leader's going to give account to God. I ought to be preaching that God's eyes watching the leader, aren't I? Amen. You, you mean pastors do that? Yeah, they do that. There was one evangelist preaching a revival one time, Brother Donnie, and Deacon came up to him the first night. He was a farmer. And he said, I, I'm, my taters have come in, and I, I'm, uh, uh, I'm harvesting them this week during revival. And if you'll stay away from this subject, at the end of the revival, I'll have you a sack of taters. And that preacher was like me. He loved potatoes. Now, I love potatoes. I love them fried. I love them boiled. I love them mashed. I'll even eat them raw sometimes. But I love them about any way you can fix them. Boy, I'm making myself hungry. But some potato and cheese tastes pretty good. Or some of that garlic bread you got there. And some mashed potatoes. Boy, that'd go good right now. I believe I could eat with one hand and preach with the other one right now. But let me tell you, I love potatoes. That evangelist, he loved potatoes. Potatoes. He got up and uh, he started preaching and, and, and every night the Holy Ghost would direct him to that subject uh, and he would stray away from it. Uh, he would thinking about that sack of potatoes. Uh, times was hard. Uh, offerings was little. Uh, and, uh, and he didn't have much. Uh, but he would stir away from that. Uh, uh, so he'd get that sack of potatoes. Uh, he preached uh, and every night and every night the Holy Ghost would get on him uh, and he'd stay away from it. Uh, last night the revival uh, 
he was preaching and the Holy Ghost was getting on him and directly walked over to the deacon and he said listen taters or no taters here it comes and my friend I'm going to tell you tonight and I'm telling America taters or no taters here it comes and John the Bible said repent 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 the kingdom of heaven is at hand pastors you need to repent preachers you need to repent church leaders you need to repent Mr. President you need to repent congressman you need to repent we need the leaders of our country the leaders of our churches and the leaders of our homes need to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand we need revival somebody shout we need revival We find that northern Israel being carried away into captivity by the Assyrians. America, whether we realize it or not, we're just sleeping away while we're being carried away by things. Amen? Amen. So we find that God had plainly told Judah that the same would happen to them if they didn't repent. God has no respect to persons. Amen. What He did with Israel... In the time of the writing of this does not change for what he will do for the United States of America. Amen. The judgment of God is for all if you go against the laws of God. Amen. Amen? It don't matter how long you've been behind a pulpit preaching. If you're not living right... That same law of God is going to come before you and judge you on judgment day. We worry about men more than we worry about God. What would one of the writers write? He should said, should I worry about those that can destroy the body? Or should I worry about the one that can destroy the body and the soul and in hell? The Bible said a nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. So America, I'm begging you tonight, don't forget God. Amen. Some of our ancestors that people have made fun of knew something. Amen. They would slip off at a certain time of the day, go in their barn loft or, or behind the barn or up on a hill or out in the woods in a stump, and they'd have them an altar and they would pray. Let me tell you, church, if tonight when you come into this house is the only time you prayed today, shame, 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 Jesus knows your name. Shame on you. If the night is after you come into this house is the only time you've prayed today. If the right now is the only time you looked at God's word as during this message today, shame on you. Shame on you. That's why we need revival. I, I, I've got to get this done tonight. I may not get to come back. Pastor Young may say, that's it. I'm going to tell it while I can. As I told one, you, you may take and gather some guys up and throw me out on the parking lot in my ear, but I'm still going to tell the truth. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you, I'll do it while you're dragging me out. But they was plainly told to repent. The kings and the people of Judah ignored God's warnings and went on living like the people of Noah's day. You see, God has sent warning after warning after warning to America. What do you think all of these things that's been happening over the years has taken place? It's God trying to wake America up, trying to shake America. Amen? Amen? Oh, I'm sick and tired of you preachers trying to say that this storm and that storm and this event and that event is God trying to wake us up. Well, if you're sick and tired of hearing it, repent and you won't have to hear it no more. When you repent, I'll stop saying it. Is that plain enough? But let me tell you, God has sent warning after warning after warning. 
and yet we don't want to listen. Age 26, King Josiah made an order for the money to be collected for the restoration of the temple in Jerusalem. During the remodeling project, Hilkiah the high priest found a copy of the first five books of the Bible and immediately sent it to King Josiah. You see... Part of the Bible was already just laid aside and they'd forgot where it was at, forgot where it was hidden. Oh, there's many houses in America that don't even have a Bible in their house. They have all other kinds of stuff. I don't know if the Enquirer still comes out or not, but many houses used to have the Enquirer in it, but they didn't have the Bible. And their slogan was inquiring minds want to know. If you've got an inquiring mind, forget to inquire and get to the Word of God. It's got the true answer about anything you want to talk about. Amen? Yeah, even about the love stories. Those of you that are hooked up on them. Amen? If you want to read a love story, get the Bible and read Genesis to Revelations. Greatest love story ever been told. And if you want to get intimate in a love story, okay, I'm kind of choosing my words here because of younger generations. If you want to get intimate about a love story, turn over to the book of Solomon. Amen? And every bit of it is pointing to one man, Jesus Christ. But we find that at the age of 26, they found the first five books of the Bible. It was, it's known as or called as the Pentateuch or the Book of the Law and was essence in the Jewish Bible of the time of that day. So the first time in his life, this godly king heard the Word of God read to him. Ain't that amazing? Now he became king at the age of eight. And you'll find in 2 Kings 22, 11 through 13, I'm not going to take the time to read all of it, but whenever the king heard the words of the book of the law, he rent his clothes, he tore his clothes. He became convicted. And the king commanded, and he gave a commandment. And his saying was to go inquire. He told those that was in leadership over the, uh, the people in the house of God to go and talk to the Lord and inquire the Lord. And we want to do away with the prophets of the day. Uh-huh. Oh, they so many churches have so ripped prophets up on one side and down the other. And you think they've missed it? Honey, I'm going to tell you, keep your ears open, your mouth shut, and start watching. You're going to start seeing some stuff. But he had told them to go inquire of the Lord. He wanted to know. And, and during this time, you say, aren't you glad that veil had rent from top to bottom that day when Jesus was hung on the cross of Calvary? Brother Anthony, you don't have to go to nobody and ask them to choir the Lord if you, for you no more. Another benefit of the cross. Before the cross, they went to the high priest. They went to the prophet to go and talk to the Lord for them. Brother David, you don't have to do that tonight. No matter what it is, all you have to do is just humble your heart before God, wherever you may be at, and go before Him. And He opens His arms. Oh, you all have been shouting right then. Amen? Those that's already got a revival fire burning within you, you have just missed a good chance to hit your feet and start shouting. But he, asked, he told him, go in and ask the Lord and, and, and inquire the Lord concerning the book and the law and, and the wrath of God that was stirred up. He wanted to know what to be done, uh, uh, how they to hearken to the, uh, the book and to do according that was written. Uh, and you know what the response was? He tore his robes. He humbled himself. He wept in the presence of the Lord. In other words, uh, uh, he got rid of pride. Uh, he got down, uh, and he began. I believe there was some fasting took place. Uh, uh, there was some crying took place. Uh, people has asked me, and lately I've been telling them uh, this way. Uh, I said the first thing you do uh, is you get down in word of prayer, and you pray, and you pray, and you pray. You pray to your eyes 
prayers get wet. Don't get up. Don't do nothing else until your prayers get wet. Your eyes get wet. And then when your eyes get wet, then open up the Word of God and start looking into that Word. And it'll start coming to you in the manner that you need to receive it. When the people get back to a broken heart and a contrite spirit, then they will see the power and the Almighty God. They will have the Spirit and the anointing flowing. The people will begin to rejoice. No wonder he said in Proverbs, when the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. But when the righteous bear through, the people rejoice. No wonder America is mourning because weakness is in authority. He humbled himself. He wept. He sent officials to find a prophet to inquire the Lord what to do. And they were able to locate a prophetess. Oh, oh boy. Can I take my liberty right here? Can I? Okay. For those of you that are hung up that a woman needs to sit with her arms folded and, and, and sit quiet and idle in the house of God and not do anything, say anything, clap her hands or praise or testify or anything else, you need to get back in the Word of God and you need to start reading. And my friend, if part of Genesis is for you, then all of Genesis is for you. If part of the Bible is for you, then all all the Bible is for you. If you can't take all of it, then throw it all away and go on out the door and forget this worship in an almighty God called Jehovah. And if it hadn't been for many women, most churches have been closed. Because you men are so proud, you're so tight-lipped, and you're, got, you're sitting on your billfold so tight that you won't even uh, uh, honor God and you say, then how have I robbed God? Boy, it got quiet then. These women wouldn't have to slay themselves to death with potluck dinners and, and soups and, uh, and chilies and hot dogs and hamburgers and cakes and pies uh, trying to pay the electric bill uh, if some of your men uh, would get up and pay uh, the dues that belong to God. It don't belong to you. It belongs to God. And then you belly ache and you cry about having such a hard time not making enough money. You're making $20 an hour and you got to have 21 about friend whenever 10 was sufficient and yet you're robbing God and all he required was only 10% show me that in the New Testament I ain't got time right now you just need to read your Bible throw it out the window or go to reading it go to studying it there's just as much on tithing in the New Testament as they are the old amen but let me say they went to this prophetess. I can't get away from it. You listen to that woman, man. You listen to that woman on everything else. Your child gets into trouble and you look at her and you say, handle it. Yep. Amen? The pastor of the local church comes around about you to church. Oh yeah, she'll be down there in the morning. What about you? i got to go deer hunting. Amen. Woman, we've got to do something about these kids. They're getting a little out of line. We need some structure. Well, what do you propose, husband? Well, take them to church to Sunday school. Why don't you take them to Sunday school? And then we want to walk down the streets. I just give Donnie Young a $100 bill. I'm all right. I just reserved my place in glory. No, you didn't. You just got your reward right then, and it just went out the, uh, just as soon as the sound died. It was just over with. He might go around and say, you know what? That guy just gave me $100 or tell something about it. That might be an, an extension of your reward, but that's as far as it's going to go. Oh, I, can't get, I can't get hung up here. 
They went to that prophetess. Her message from the Lord confirmed that God was indeed going to bring disaster on the land of the people. Uh, but He would give it to King Uzziah peace during His reign because He had a responsive heart. And He heard the word of the Lord read to Him. You'll find in 2 Kings 23, 1-3. You need to read this. Verse 3 said, And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord. Now let me give somebody a warning right here. The Bible said it's better to never make a vow than to make a vow and defer to pay it. And when you get in that hour of trouble, sorrow, problems, and you go to cry, Oh God, if you'll take care of this, I'll be at church Sunday. You better be at church Sunday. Oh, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've got this big big old hospital bill. And then you get a phone call. Hey, we've got an assistance program down here, and we'll take care of that if you just fill out this form. And you've been praying, Oh, God, if you'll get me with this hospital bill, I'll start paying tithes. Yeah, I'm talking to somebody. I don't know who, but I'm talking to somebody. You got that phone call. Well, well, you didn't give the glory to the hospital. You didn't give none to God. You know what that hospital did? They took care of that bill. No, God took care of that bill because the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And then you deferred to pay your vow. I'm going to tell you, it'll cost you double or more if you don't keep your vow under the Lord. And people, they'll do that. They'll do it day in and day out. Day in and day out. And King Josiah made a covenant with God. And he began to, he, he went and making a bargain. He didn't make a deal. God is not, let's make a deal, God. Amen. He said, this is life and this is death. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. And so uh, uh, he made a covenant, and it was written, uh, and the people stood, uh, and they accepted the covenant. Revival came, and people recommitted their hearts and lives to God. This is what we need today. After this renewal, King Josiah set about ripping down the pagan altars. I ain't got no little pot-bellied wooden man called Buddha in my house. You may not. But there's a lot of pagan altars in the house of God and in the people of God's houses. Amen? There's been a lot of people who made their children their God. And I love children. But each thing has a position and a place. Amen? Your first priority is God. You and God. Your marriage, your second priority is your spouse. And your third priority is your children. When you got your priorities in order, the children is going to be okay and took care of. I'm not ashamed to stand for Jesus. He took a stand for me. He purchased my salvation on the cross of Calvary. love he showed. Oh, praise his lovely name. Oh, praise his lovely name.